Hello and welcome to another video. So we have a few new cards revealed. I can't be bothered working out exactly how many, but it's a few because we have an IGN article where they got exclusive access to some new cards. And we have one card that was released a day or so ago on Shadow vs Twitter. So we'll start with the one on Twitter. We got Vlad, 5 drop, 4-5 for blood. Some silver, so not too bad. At the end of your turn, deal 1 damage to all other followers. Basically a worse ancient line. There's not much else to say with that. I wish it was better, but eh, you may see playing some control variants, but probably not. There are just better options for clearing. So, we'll go on to the article. We have the first, well, I think the first, no, second Blood Legendary, sorry. Because we already got the other one revealed, didn't we? So, the effect is up here. They didn't really set these out very well, so I do apologize. We have Maelstrom Serpent, a 5 5 Bloodcraft follower that costs 8 play points. And the fanfare effect is summon a Maelstrom Serpent. Repeat until your area is full if Vengeance is active. So, that's pretty insane. You're playing, even if you were playing this turn 8, you know, you, drop, you can drop a full board of 5-5s. Five with an Evolve, you can go for the 7-7, seven seven, which they do mention here. There is also a combo with one of the other cards, which is Belfamet, I think it's called. I really can't be sure. I've got so many cards here. I'll scroll through and find it for you guys. Got so many cards. Um, it was one of the first few revealed. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So you combo this card with this and enhance five, subtract three, and then you can drop Maelstrom, Maelstrom Serpent turn five. Which, if you have Vengeance, will then fill the board completely. Even if you don't have Vengeance, though. Um, you should, be due to where this full stop is in the sentence, you should still get one. So you're going to get two five fives for six cost. If that is how that functions. Which I'm assuming it is due to how this is written. But, until we get the actual card text, it might be a bit harder to decipher. Otherwise, you're going for a full board turn six with that kind of play. Which is pretty insane. Um, I'm just going to skip over their opinions on the card, because I don't think that's really over the necessary. Um, they talk about one of the ones we've already seen, which is the draw two cards, still damage to your leader until you're at 10 vengeance. It's not active. It's not bad. It's good for vengeance activation. Now, we have Chimera, a silver rarity runecraft follower, which is a 4-4 that costs 9 play points. That line isn't great. Hopefully its effect makes up for it. Fanfare, deal 4 damage to an enemy follower, subtract 0 from this card, so it's spell boost. So, this isn't actually too bad. It's not the best, I don't think you'll see much play unless a follower support becomes heavier, because you've got better cards with better stat lines that can be dropped, like Daria for example. I don't think the 4 damage to an enemy follower is quite good enough. This might be an okay substitute for something, if you're missing something, but other than that, I think I don't think it'll see too much. It's not as good as Flame Destroyer. Might work in a good D-Shift if you're looking for something like that, but that's about it. Next up, we have Vega Bond Frog, a, a Bronze Swordcraft Officer. Well, it's an officer, that's good to know. It costs 3 play points. Not a bad, not bad. It's a 1-2 body and has the text at the end of your turn, Gain Ambush. Uh, any fast Swordcraft deck, and then they just go into their opinion, so that's fine. Um, having Ambush at the end of every turn, that's not bad. Attack with it, end turn, Ambush, end turn, Ambush. I could actually see this working in an aggressive style deck, maybe even in a control deck. If you combo, maybe, what would be a good one? Um, any kind of boost, so Banner might work. That might be alright. Next up, we have Dragoon Scyther. Scyther? I'm pretty sure that's Scyther. Wow, okay. Um, meanwhile, what is this? Meanwhile, it is a 2-2 Bronze Rarity Dragoncraft follower that costs 3 play points, okay? Has the text Bane, Fanfare, Gain Storm if Overflow is active for you. Would work really probably well in Storm. Storm Dragon. Don't know whether it'll see much play in anything else, because it could probably be outclassed, but... Storm definitely might be worth it. Bane would be good to get round big wards. And as they've got this listed, this is the final one they have to reveal apparently, and it is Alcat. I love the art. I've just got to say, the art is awesome. Especially love that it's just awesome. <laughs> I don't have much more to say that. 
Um, a 2-1 for two play points. Uh, neutral. So neutral. Bronze neutral. Okay. I was looking for what class it was from. Arcan has the text clash, destroy the enemy follower if it has one attack. So I'm guessing due to the way this works, so against say sword, anything with one attack is instantly destroyed before taking any damage. That's handy. Whenever this follower attacks another follower or is attacked by a follower. Triggers before any follower takes damage. Yes, yeah, so what I assumed. If your follower is 1-3, yep, yeah, so they just talk about that. And I'm guessing that's the Evolve Art, which is pretty cool that they go for a fully different, like completely different style where they just have the Owl Cat on its own with a mice. That's pretty cool. Um, Looks like they actually do have a little bit more here. But for some reason they said the final... Our oh, final follower. Okay, so now we're moving into spells and amulets, obviously. So, so those were our followers. Okay, here we go. Man-eating mangrove is a silver rarity three play point forest amulet with the text countdown two. Whenever an enemy follower attacks your leader, deal two damage to that follower. Ooh, two damage, not bad. That isn't bad at all, actually. You could use that against other forest decks or other really early game cards. That might actually be all right. This seems like a pretty strong anti-aggro tool. Yep, that's exactly what I think. Especially for things like Shadow, it would be good to kill off. The next card is Death's Ledger, a gold rarity amulet for Shadowcraft. It costs four points. It has the text countdown two at the end of your turn. Put a random Shadowcraft follower that costs less than your total number of playpoint orbs from your deck into play. Wow. Puts it into play. So if you're playing Last Word, this is probably pretty insane. Wow, okay. So you play if you play this on four, you're gonna get something within the range of one till three. Guaranteed, pretty much for free. You're gonna get two of them because it's counting down two. So Yeah, you're guaranteed at least two. Is it two or three? I think it actually let's see. Play the amulet has two, drops two, one, and then one in. No. So it's gonna be two. At the end of the turn you play it and the end of the turn after that. You could also play this turn 10, for example, and instantly get a 9 drop or a 10 drop even. It doesn't have to be less. Wait, I think it's less, isn't it? It costs less, yeah, so 9. So the biggest drop you could earn is a 9 drop. And I just clicked on the image by accident, but that's fine because you can see up close the art is awesome on it. Uh, many builds of this deck only include followers 2, 4, 7, 8 play points, doing that your Nephrus has played 1 follow. Yeah, so you'd play this before Nep, I'd recommend, personally. Um, geez, they go into depth on that, don't they? Uh, but my opinion on this, I reckon this will be played in most control styles, shadow decks, maybe even some aggro. Can't be sure. And we've also got another amulet. Where I hate how they've structured this. Uh, last reveal of the eight card, gold rarity haven amulet, tarnished grail, which has the text cost. Um, countdown 3, fanfare, deal 2 damage to all followers. Last word, randomly put 3 of the following 4 cards into your hand. What? 3 of the 4, so you're going to get guaranteed Servant, Silent Rider, DS Demise, and Azeroth Reckoning. Most of these I do recognize, which is fine, and they're all extremely overpowered. I think the best 3, probably Silent Rider, this donation and Azeroth's Reckoning, but Silent Seven of Darkness is still a solid 13-13, no matter what. So, that's great for turn 8. But, you've also got to consider you are competing against Seraph. I think if you're going to use a card like this, you'd want to do it with the new Argus, which is... I don't know, they had it on here somewhere. New Heavenly Argus, I think. Because turn 9, you can play, you can play this turn 8 and then play him turn 9. And in Guardian Sun, you can almost replace Prince of Darkness with this card. Not completely, because Prince of Darkness gives you more, but this still is really good. It is countdown 3, so you do have to wait. But if you're running it in Seraph as well, you could maybe get away with it. It might just give you more options. I'm definitely interested to see how this card fits in, whether it's going to be too hard because it needs to be played at the same time as Seraph, or whether it fits in the deck on a new Control Seraph variant, where Seraph isn't the main focus, and it's kind of a extra win condition. So you have Tarnish Grail, which could be a win condition, Seraph that could be a win condition, and Control the Board. Might be interesting to see, that's for sure. So, that's pretty much it. 
That's all the cards they've revealed so far. As soon as they're in this format, I will be adding them to my list and we will be going over all the cards before the release of the expansion in one big video. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. And I'll catch you guys next time. So hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I'll see ya.